Hey, this is Joe Denbar's Microgreens coming back with part two of my grow lighting for microgreen growers series here. Um, really want to get into like how do we apply some of those terms and things that we talked about in the last video for a microgreens grower. Um, so it's going to be super techy here. I'm going to get out my pad, pad of paper and a pen and we're just going to diagram stuff out, talk about some numbers um, and why you, when you see people say, well, use two T5s per shelf or one T8 per shelf, what is really behind and driving those figures? Um, so yeah, hopefully you can take this and uh, learn something and apply it to your own grow. Um, maybe if you're coming into this and this is your first time really diving into grow lights for microgreens, this will help you inform a decision. Like, do you want to go shop lights, grow lights, what T5 versus T8, how many, uh, what inches between your shelves do you need? Uh, why might you want to use T5s at a shorter distance versus T8s at a longer distance? Things like that. So with that, um, we're going to do one of these little shaky things and we'll go to the next uh, segment. All right, so here we just have a quick diagram. Uh, if we think about this up here as our light ballast that our light is coming off of, um, we're kind of looking down the length of a uh, four foot shelf in this diagram. Um, so this is essentially just starting to look at the light, if we assume the light angle is coming down at 90 degrees, um, and then what distance do we need? So if we have a, a 90 degree triangle with 45s on the corner, and you're trying to cover a 20 inch distance from side to side, um, your least amount of triangle that you're going to need is 10 inches here. That's going to be the height of your triangle on a 90 like that. So that's just one thing to start to remember, and this is where we're going to start with some of our basic assumptions. Um, when we look at the micromoles per second, the PPF of T5s versus T8s, you're going to see some pretty big differences here. If we take this 10 inch difference, a T5 light is going to be at 75 micromoles per second. Um, and then a T8 light at 10 inches is going to be 180 micromoles per second. I put this here at 12 inches too, because this is a common distance that people using T8s put their shelves at. Just as an alternative, you know, you're looking at 142 micromoles per second at a 12 inch self shelf spacing. So what does this all really mean? This means your T8 is going to be m more than twice as bright at the same distance as your T5. And this is why when it comes down to you hear people talking about you needing two T5 lights as opposed to one T8 light per shelf. Um, this is kind of where the math is coming in because you need at those distances to get the same amount of light photons that will activate photosynthesis. So your PPF, you need twice the lights, if not three times the lights to get closer to that. Um, this is why you'll see some people recommending two lights or three lights per rack on the T5s. Now, other things to take into consideration, 10 inches isn't going to be your true distance. First off, you have a one inch difference up here, right? Your 1020 is actually an inch. If you're using a one inch shallow 1020, it's going to be one inch higher. So really, if you want to talk about a 10 inch distance, you should have your rat shelves spaced at 11 inches from, from your light to the, the bottom of your rack or 10 inches to the top of the tray. But not only that, what happens once your plants start growing, right? You know, we're a lot of things getting two to three inches um, out of your different plants. Here, we'll make them cutesy for those of you who are um, into the art. Sorry, my art sucks. Maybe I should just do uh, some number eights here. That works better. Um, yeah, so if you're two to three inches higher on top of this one inch, we're actually, what, up to four inches higher. And so to get your maximum PPF, you know, a lot of people... Uh, and I did this as a very novice beginner grower, had adjustable lights on my shelves and I'd actually raise them up or down. This is great for plant starts, uh, totally unnecessary for microgreens. Um, you just want to find the best average. But you, if you see people recommending 14 inches between shelf um, to shelf, that is actually maybe a little bit more true when plants are at their highest. Um, for the highest amount of PPF that we're wanting them to receive. Now, it's probably important to say, well, what's the average over time here as well? Lots of things to consider, but most people you'll see with the T8s growing at 10 to 12 inches. Why do we see people saying two T5s at eight inches? Um, this is because your lights at eight inches are producing 91 micromoles per second, 
where if you have two of them, puts you in that 182 micromoles per second. Remember, 180 micromoles per second at 10 inches on a T8, a single T8, as opposed to two here. So to get an equivalent growth, you need twice as many lights and shorter distances. When you think about it, this is the beam angle coming down. You don't want a whole lot of overlap because it's it's great wasted light. And that's why I think when you get to a third T8, you're having a whole lot of hot spot in here and less light on your edges. And you're gonna have very similar results as you had before where your P's are gonna grow up and curve in. These are gonna be really long. These are gonna be short because they're getting a ton of light. Um, and it's just gonna result in uneven growth. So two T5s per shelf is sufficient. And that is the same if you're using a shop light or a grow light. The main difference between the two is only the PAR, so the light spectrum being emitted. The amount of light in the, the PPF is going to be the same between the two of them. So the plants don't really care. Um, they're not going to grow a whole lot higher or different uh, between the shop light and the grow light. But you only need the two lights at 8 inches. All right, let's synthesize this all together. I've been throwing a whole bunch of information in the last video than this video at you um, as far as like, hey, what does this all mean on distances and the number of lights you need? Um, and now I'm gonna throw in another uh, consideration, cost, right? If you're a brand new grower, um, you gotta weigh the pros and cons of everything. And here's just kind of the rundown of how I view a lot of those pros and cons. So uh, just as of today, um, we looked up the T5 shop lights on Amazon from Barina. You can find other companies too, but they're all in a pretty similar price range. Looking at $89 for a set of 12 T5 shop lights. That comes out to uh, two lights per shelf, $14.83 per shelf. So that's a, uh, um, just thinking that through, that's, that's gonna get you the amount of light you need um, for a pretty reasonable price. This is gonna be the least expensive price of all the ones on this list. Um, T5 grow lights, $89 for eight. A couple considerations here. That's $22.25 per shelf. That's $8 more. It's significantly more to get the grow lights. Now in the last video, or a couple videos ago, I showed that the grow lights do get deeper coloration on the colors that have that red veins and those red hues, your purple kohlrabis, your red acre cabbage, that stuff. You do get better colors on that. Who is your clientele? Who are you targeting? If it's restaurants, they want the color. It may be worth it to have the higher investment upfront cost to get better color for you, um, rather than allowing colors to be a little bit more muted, where not saying that people at grocery stores deserve less, but they often, um, they may not be as keen on really having those colors that pop like a chef might. A really important thing to point out, one eight pack is only gonna outfit four shelves, right? Um, when you get to the T5s, because their spacing is so much shorter, because we want them at eight inches to get the higher PPF um, in that area, you, you need your shelves shorter, um, but you also, at that point, can put a sixth shelf on a rack. That means you can take your total production using a T5 light from 20 trays on a rack to 24 trays on a rack. Um, I know there's people who use T8s, they do one uh, row of shelves or lights hanging from the ceiling and so they are using a sixth shelf. To me, that is just inefficient use of labor to get up there to water them um, to each their own. But to really like have within that 72 to 76 inches, those six shelves that are able to be watered efficiently, you know, uh, T5s are a great option. But if you're buying the grow lights, you're only going to be out to outfit four of those six lights, two thirds of your shelf. So not only are you paying more, more per shelf for to get the same amount of lights, you also have to buy two packs of these just to fill up one rack. So just some things to consider like in those initial costs, it's actually gonna be a lot more to use T5 grow lights as opposed to T5 shop lights. T8, let's go to the T8 grow lights. You can get very similar effects where the colors pop more underneath the grow lights um, using a T8 grow light, same as a T5 shop light. Again, I recommend the Barina Pinkish. Uh, to me, it's the best of kind of balancing colors and workability. When you get too pink, it can be really hard to work underneath and around, um, but the Pinkish is actually not that bad. 
because you need to keep these at 10 to 12, even 14 -ish inches per shelf, you're only ever going to get five shelves per rack out of the T8s. So the nice things is using uh, one six pack of the Barina T8s, you can outfit a whole shelf. Um, and there's no buying two packets and then having to just kind of cobble them together, right? You're just buying one pack, one six pack, you're going to have an extra light. Uh, if one burns out or maybe you get up to the point where you have six racks and then or five racks and you have an extra light from each one of those sets that you purchased and you're ready to outfit that fifth rack. Um, 1666 per shelf. So it's in the media, medium there because you're only using one light per shelf. Um, you can definitely get away with getting the better colors for less upfront investment. But once you really get going and if you're at scale um, and it, the, you're trying to having to maximize your square footage, um, six shelves just makes a huge difference uh, when it comes down to like uh, producing four more trays per rack every week. So that's just kind of like how you might use those three depending on where you are. Um, I started using the T8 grow lights, five per rack, loved them. It wasn't until I moved here in my new facility that I moved to the T8, or sorry, the T5 shop lights. I liked those, but I was starting to notice I was losing some of the coloration. So that's when I went back and I started getting my T5 grow lights, um, and I'll eventually pull these lights off um, and replace them as I can with grow lights. Um, and I'll just use these as overhead lighting throughout my entire uh, facility here. Uh, because I do want that color. I, one of my main clientele is chefs. I do want to provide the color that pops more for my CSA customers and my farmer's market customers too. Like I don't want to skimp on anyone. Um, so I do want to provide that. But in the meantime, these have obviously, I mean, great grows of broccoli here right behind me. Um, Amaranth does great under the shop lights. They're, they're a very viable, inexpensive, uh, good way to get started growing um, for anyone. But as you move along, you may find that the grow lights are going to give you the grow that you really want and that you're shooting for better in the long run. So just some things to just keep in your mind that how you might want to position yourself, how does it affect your grow in the long run, how is it driven by who your customer base is, um, and how you want to just kind of manage your space because there's almost limitless options out there for how you can do this microgreens thing. So I hope between these different video series, um, looking at... From everything from talking about lumens and how we can just throw that number out, but wattages uh, may be a little bit more important because it's how we can compare between companies of LED lights better um, because a lot of them don't necessarily give you PPF ratings or PPFD ratings. Um, how PPFD ratings can be a little misleading, um, how manufacturers choose to do that. Um, just kind of the soup to nuts on everything microgreens growing lighting. And I hope you guys learned something. If you are, uh, please drop a comment on what you learned. Or um, if you have a question about anything, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, help me beat the robots out there to get this message out there for all our uh, new microgreen growers who are coming into the business. Help them make the, uh, a, a wise decision and, and help them sort through what can be a very complex topic too. Because there's a lot of stuff that can go into this. And maybe it's just that... Uh, just use one light or two lights and use the right light and go from there. But I feel like the more people are informed, the more uh, informed decisions they can make when it comes all the way down to how many hours am I running and hopefully we can get ahead of some of these questions we're seeing across all these microgreen groups of like what's the distance on shelves, things like that. So help me get to that search engine uh, optimization. People who can come across this video on their own um, and I appreciate it. Until next time.